On this episode of Non-Native Creative, I'm talking with Saya Suetsugu. She is the president of TIP, Tokyo International Players. I want English language theater to be more accessible for everyone and to continue to be it that way. We become more and more digital and it's great, but being able to be in a moment and sharing it with a room of a hundred or hundreds of people is something that not many people do anymore. So I think that's something that's also incredibly special. How did you first get interested in doing international work or in, in doing things more outside of your home country? I was in nursery kindergarten. Because of my father's job, we moved to the States. So that's when I was first exposed to English. And at that young age, you know, you don't really know what language you're speaking or anything. I just got thrown into the local school. So then by the time I returned to Japan, I was already speaking English without really thinking about how to learn English or anything like that. Then my parents wanted me to keep up with my English. So I went to an international school and I went to all throughout high school, graduated, went to an international university and so on and so forth. How did that kind of contribute then to your interest in working in like more creative pursuits? When we were living in New York, my parents were not shy about exposing me to all sorts of arts and letting me take, you know, all the classes that you can take like ballet, tap dance, gymnastics, etc. And I went right into it. I never, I got into it and I never really stopped. When I moved to New York to go to college, that was another thing that I wanted to see Broadway shows. Mm -hmm. So when I, <laughs> as much as I said, I want to go to New York to study, I actually really wanted to just go see a bunch of Broadway shows. <laughs> and that, that had me, um, that got me really hooked to be able to have theater in such a close proximity mm -hmm. of, you know, what are we going to do over the weekend? Oh, let's just go see a show. And that was incredible. How did you kind of carry that with you and bring it back to Tokyo then? Out of college, I got to work in New York and I was working at, um, in television. I s started to become the person that was the Broadway expert. And so I got to, at times, incorporate what I knew and what I did outside of work into my actual job. And when I came back to Japan, I had wanted to continue to do theater. I also knew that I could not perform as a living. I don't have the skin for it. I you have to be really, really thick skinned, I think, to you know make a career out of being a performer. And so I kind of took the safe route, I might say, to you know have a regular job and to be able to do that on the side. Mm -hmm. And that's where I found tips. What's the current production that you're working on? Right now we are working on Shakespeare's The Two Gentlemen of Verona. It is one of his lesser known works, I guess, or his earlier works. And we have an all-female cast to perform this show and they are incredible. They're so talented and they're very funny and I've had the pleasure of being assistant director for this production. Isn't all female productions fairly common for TIP? No, this is the director's vision to do it with an all female cast. So at the moment, we're doing three shows per season, and the seasons are like an American school year. So it's from September to June. For this season, we started out with Sweeney Todd, and the closing May production is The Who's Tommy. Both are very, very male heavy cast. Depending on the production, there are restrictions on whether or not you can gender swap. Some shows may say, for this role, you can, it doesn't matter, for, or for this role, it has to be a male or it has to be a female playing this role. So based on that, it was great to have our director have this vision of wanting to do an all-female cast. I think in this day and age, it's a great thing that we're doing. Where are you holding these rehearsals for volunteer performing? It might depend on the production, but for the production that we're working on right now, our stage manager and the producer of the show sit together and they work out the one, the rehearsal schedule. And because our producer is the owner of a space called Our Space, which we frequent the most for um, doing our rehearsals. And if other groups have reservations, then we go to other places like Kumin centers or Civic Hall 
centers mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and for rehearsal. What are the rehearsals like? Usually we have auditions maybe three to four months in advance of the production. And then once we start rehearsals, we rehearse about three to five times a week. And weekdays, obviously it'll be in the evenings. And then weekends is whatever time that's most convenient for the majority of the cast members that are involved. And as you get closer to production, then those weekend rehearsals might be a little longer. You might have ones that are, you know, 1 to 10 p.m. You mentioned that you're doing three different shows each year, and then you, you decide which shows to do at the beginning of the year yes. for the course of the year. So what's the process of approving or rejecting a show? The directors submit a proposal, and on that proposal, we have, they list their production team, and they also, you know, have images of what type of set and costumes, etc., that they want to use. What are some of the restrictions? What are some of the things that they need to look out for when putting together this production, etc.? We don't focus so much on how much audience members we can bring in, rather than we want to make sure that it is something, it's a show that, you know, the director is most passionate about. For musicals, the right cost is expensive. For a TIP schedule, we either do five to six shows in the run for three to four months of rehearsal. You can only do it five to six times. Wow. And each show for a musical can cost up to maybe 600 to 1,000 USD. Wow. So that's how much we're paying in rights to be able to do that show. So you know, it can get expensive and that's why we might, you know, prefer to do a Shakespeare where it's not going to cost as much right. or... I remember when I first came to Tokyo and I heard about TIP and I, in my head, I heard, you know, like community theater sort of thing. And I think that in some cases, like the word community mm -hmm. has sort of that homemade and not in a good way, like the way that you would think like, homemade like sweater by your grandma right. sort of thing. <laughs> no offense to grandmas who make sweaters. I make sweaters, but like that was the image I had. But then when I went to my first TIP show, I was blown away. I was like, this is a proper production. Like it was really good. Like the space that was used, mm -hmm. um, the theater was amazing. The costumes were amazing. Like there was lighting and sound and, and like it was a, it was real. Like, and every single production that I've been to is of that quality. So hearing about all of the different things that go into doing that, it's just, and for free too, <laughs> you know, it's all volunteer. That just amazes me. Have you found like there's something that's really like kind of special about working with people from different countries or maybe from different backgrounds? What we all have in common is the passion for theater, regardless of whether you're a performer or you're working the sound or the lights or anything. And what makes it so special is that everyone who is involved has a different background. Not all of us have studied theater, including myself, to, you know, to be a professional. But then there are people who have done that. And so then being able to learn from them and then apply those skills, it's incredible. When you're a performer, your focus is to get on stage and learn your lines and, you know, learn all these different things and what you know sometimes we all forget as performers is that you actually do have a huge group of people who are supporting you to make sure that you're lit when you're on stage you actually have costumes that you wear and all these different components and to be able to learn all of that is one thing but you also have to make sure that you remember everyone is donating their time nobody is getting paid so it's an there's a wonderful group of people. I want to ask a little bit about the audience side too. What kinds of people do you generally find come to watch TIP shows? For a well-known show, it is easier to draw in a Japanese audience. In general, I think it's it can be a little more challenging to bring in audiences for you know lesser known shows. For example, we did Sweeney Todd in October. And because Sweeney Todd is a musical that's better known in Japan, it was, I think, easier to bring in more Japanese audiences. And also because they know the show and, you know, they know what to expect. And even without an audio guide, 
it's easier for them to understand. Okay, what's the audio, guys? We tend to do this more for straight plays rather than musicals because it's a little harder to do it for musicals in the first place. But we, like if someone would go to see Kabuki, they would get an earpiece and they get kind of a scene by scene um, description summary of what's happening on stage in Japanese. Not necessarily to bring in more Japanese audiences, but to assist so with their theater experience. So that's an additional component that has to be prepared for these yes. shows. That's tough. And that's something that you're doing, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we now have a translation team and they're awesome and they're wonderful. So what happens recently is that the director, you know, goes through the script and they write down all of the key summaries that they want used in the audio guide. And then he sends it to the translation team and then the translation team would go through it, translate it, and then it comes back to the production team and the production team then reviews it and those who are you know, bilingual and know the show will go through it again. And then after that, we record it. That's where I've been you know, most involved in recently is to be the voice on the audio guide. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have a wider audience? Absolutely. If you're able to come and see the show, we would love for you know anyone to come and see the show and be a part of the experience because the production team as a whole has been working on this for at least three to four months. And the directors have been working on the show for you know maybe over a year from the start of when they think about oh, maybe I want to direct that show to the point of actually getting it up on stage and we welcome anyone to come and see it. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to come and see a show, how do they find information about it? If you go to our website, which is www.tokyoplayers.org, um, you can find us on you know, social media and all of that as well. Okay, cool. And then for every production you do too, there's a chance to kind of interact with some of like, uh, I think you said like the director, the assistant director, there's a sort of Q&A session as yes. well. So people can participate in that too. Yes. What has become a tradition now is after the Saturday matinee show, we have a director's talk. We do a Q&A and the core members of the production team would get on stage and sometimes some of our cast members would as well. And we have a session of Q&A and it's usually, that's the time when we have the most school groups come in as well. So then it, you know, they get to ask questions and learn a little bit more about the process. You know, how do you learn your lines or who designed the costume and you know, whatever that, is they're curious about. I look forward to like the next time to, to come see a show and I hope lots of other people come and check it out as well. It's fantastic. So thank you so much for no chatting problem. with me today. Thank I really you. appreciate all your insights. So thanks very much for watching this episode of Non-Native Creative with Saya Suetsugu, the president of TIP, Tokyo International Players. Please be sure to take a look at their website and all their great resources so that you don't miss a show next time you're visiting Tokyo. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. So it's, it's kind of our idea of what an old-timey, renaissance-esque world might look like. I think it's something that you, you really had to be there. And, it's, you know, you hear that people, you hear people say that in conversations of like, ah, oh, you had to be there. But to experience that moment, you had to be there. And because it's not going to be the same that later that evening or the next evening. So I think that's really cool.